Are you guys ready? Ready. Ready. Let's do it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. This is your Libertarian Crusaders episode number seven. And before we go into all the shootings uh, and the red flags and our video games to to blame, uh, we're going to talk about something hilarious that everyone's right on the money. You would have been uh, silly to bet against it and would be Epstein committing suicide. It wasn't Hillary Clinton and it wasn't President Trump. It was video (laughs) games that killed Epstein. Yes, it was. They snuck in there in the dead of, well, early, early morning. (laughs) Right. And strung him up. You know, maybe you're right because there's a lot of video games where you don't have like, uh, if you do like hardcore mode and you can't die, uh, sometimes they're like suicide runs. You know, if you have like infinity lives like in Mario, it kind of creates this suicide emotion for you to kind of want to keep taking your own life. Yeah, I can see that. That's a strong yeah. argument there. Yeah. Um, now, who actually believes he committed suicide? It would have to be the perfect suicide, right? Because he was, if I'm not mistaken, right next to some other really famous 24-hour suicide watch prisoner. He was, you know, military guards. I mean, if your government can't protect you from killing yourself when they're watching you to protect you from killing yourself, yeah, we should turn in all of our guns right now because they got this. They can't even do that. (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, and it happened on a Friday night into Saturday morning at the very end of the week's news cycle. So you got a full 48 hours before the news cycle picks back up. And I'm sure something else horrible will happen in the world between now and then. Right. So. Um... I think that maybe if it was a suicide, it would have been one where like somebody passed a pill into a jail cell, right? And it's like uh, this pill is going to make you hang yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> did he hang himself? What did they say? What did they say? How they found him in any condition? I don't think they've really released a lot of details yet. Right. And this is yeah. part of the problem that's fueling the entire thing is no, the, it's no transparency, detail. no integrity. Well, they got to launch an investigation, even though they were watching the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you know. They'll investigate themselves and uh, sure uh, clear themselves of any wrong. Right, like <laughs> so. get rid of the, the camera seven, seven settings and everything, like DNC did to themselves. Yeah. So I heard I heard reports that uh, he was taken off of suicide watch, you know, a couple days right before that this happened, and potentially a camera malfunction, which just adds more fuel to the fire, no doubt. It's like how can how could you even put that out with a straight face? I don't right. understand it. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Reggie? Do you think uh, an assassin came in? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blue pill. <Yeah. All> right. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe there was a body switch and that's not Epstein that died. There Ooh. is some conspiracies of that. Like there is like a picture of maybe the body being rolled away and they said like nose is too round. It's something like the know? face, the, the head wasn't the right dimensions for, right. I mean, I guess maybe you swell up. I don't know. Yeah, so. I mean, that's a good point if it does swell up. Yeah. I don't know if the human body looks differently. I feel like doing that um, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson thing. Technically, uh, the, the atoms in a human body are still the same, whether they're alive or dead. That guy got a lot of shit for the uh, shootings. Yeah. For telling the truth. Yeah. Yeah. One thing about Epstein that I want to mention is that a lot of people were upset that a lot of attention wasn't given to Epstein because of the shootings. People are saying, well, here, watch out. Here are going to come some mass shootings to kind of cover up the Epstein scandal and push it in the pages far behind in the newspapers, you know, so to speak. And the opposite happened. we got to kill Epstein right. to yeah. cover up these shootings. Right. <laughs> well, there's also there. Epstein wasn't a single operator either. He ran a network. Where is the rest of the people in his network? And... It's known, like, it's come out that now he's known intelligence. There's people that said, oh, I was told not to go after him because he's intelligence. So it's funny that now he's dead. All the focus is on him, if his body's real or not, and not the network behind him or anything like that. Right. Because it comes on, um, like, the night of when they uh, unsealed a lot of the paperwork that would have uh, pinpointed to a lot of his connections out there in his network and showing me Clinton was there 26 times. Um, I like the memes of like Hillary Clinton with the, the mustache, with the mustache <laughs> and sunglasses. <laughs> I, I might have that one on my page. I think this is the one conspiracy that unites us all as Americans that we all are calling out bullshit at the same time. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, because it equally implicated <laughs> the left and the right. Yeah. That's the only reason. Right. At least we have a unifying cause at this moment, at this juncture. We're not at each other's throats. At least we're kind of seeing uh, the fallibility of government justice. You can say that because he was on suicide watch, and then who takes him off suicide watch? That's kind of weird, right? 
So, and people were expecting to see justice. This is kind of like an escape of it. This is kind of like, um, like when Fidel Castro died in his bed peacefully at age, you know, 80 something, you know? Right. Um, and the way he wants to go out. And bin Laden was thrown overboard of a naval ship right, right. after, so, you know, capturing him and killing so, him and stuff. Right. So, that kind yeah, of stuff. So conveniently. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so I guess maybe it wasn't a distraction from the shootings. Maybe the, it was just a weird thing. Everybody saw it coming. And I think uh, we could at least agree that the government can't even protect you when they're in their control in their hands, All right? <laughs> Every option for control that they have, and they still cannot keep them alive. Right. They're there, completely under their control, and they can't even keep them alive. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, the shooting, the Parkland shooting, where like uh, the cops are supposed to keep those kids alive, yeah. but there they are, did. There but, are. Uh, metal detectors before you go into the right. school, <laughs> everything you can imagine. Like, how do you even commit suicide in prison? That's got to be really hard to do. Especially if you're in a single cell, not in general population. Right. Yeah, watch exactly. 24 hours a day. I guess the guy who took him off of suicide watch probably signed it because he didn't want to commit suicide himself. <laughs> it was probably going to be happening if he didn't. That's a good point. Like, I don't want to be here. Some shady stuff is going to happen. <laughs> I need to get out of here. I've seen Assassin's Creed. I watch movies. Right. I play violent video games. I know how this ends. I know what happens to people when they have info on the Clintons. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck this. Get them out of here. Right. Um, that's a good point. I wouldn't want to be on that watch at all. So I guess the only real suicide watch was maybe watching him commit suicide. Was their Suic- interpretation of that. Yeah. Literal interpretation of the rules. You know? Right. <laughs> Um, so we had some shootings uh, last week, uh, several of them, three of them. So they're trying to lump three together because there was one the previous weekend and then there were two this last weekend. Within hours of each other. Right. Right, exactly. Yeah. One was other. like one o'clock in the morning and the other one was like in the, in the afternoon hours the day before. Right. So one was in El Paso, Texas, and the other is, was in Dayton, Dayton Ohio. Dayton, Ohio, yeah. Yeah. And one was at a Walmart, the one in Texas was at a Walmart, and the one in Ohio was at a strip, like a bars, so like a nightlife area. Mm -hmm. So a place that would be heavily patrolled by police and security. Yeah. Yet again, another situation where the soft target incidents comes into play, because alcohol and... It's an active shooter protection zone. That's what the gun laws are (laughs) for. Yeah, I like that. You know? (laughs) Some of these places were gun-free zones. I think like the Garlic Festival was was Mm -hmm. gun-free, right? And in California also. Right. Yeah, they're very heavily against that. (laughs) Um, (laughs) They should just make murder illegal, and then we wouldn't have these problems, right? There we go. And that's a great solution. Yeah. Yeah. That should solve everything. Yeah. (laughs) Just make murder illegal, and nobody can can kill each other. They say that there's uh, several thousand already laws on the books. I mean, you count... Uh, I think 27,000 is like a number that was thrown out there. Yeah. I saw it in a meme. It must be true. Right. So. <laughs> uh, the Brookes Institute puts it at several hundred, only when you include federal and state. But then you also have local jurisdictions. You have counties. And you have thousands of them all across the country with their own uh, regulations and how to and when to or what you can have. Uh, and that does add up. Those are regulations. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, I guess we just need one more. Yeah. On one that. more should do it. Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> I mean, not only count that uh, California says that you can't transport, own, or manufacture an assault weapon, <laughs> would be your first charge. Then your 10-round magazines that, I mean, your over 10-round magazines that came into the state transported makes it illegal. You know, destruction of private property, cutting the fence, I'm pretty sure, is illegal. And, you know, murder. You yeah. Just throw that on in there and, you know, so you got four felony charges and we need one more law. To cover, <laughs> I like the direction where Texas is going. They're saying repeal the gun laws. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Missouri's already kind of you know took a lot of action in this way. They have constitutional carry, and then they have a law that they don't acknowledge federal gun control. So they're, if you will, a sanctuary state for guns. Right. I like that. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's beautiful. For private property, virtually. Like, I mean, maybe they're not perfect on everything, but step in the right direction can be praised, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, what, I, mean, I mean, if you guys really think about it, 
red flag laws. Come on, guys. Make you believe uh, that they're saying the people who control what memes you can post on Facebook should be the ones who can control what kind of uh, derangement you might could be having in your own home or, t or talking about. All right, common sense, red flag laws. I think that's kind of what's needed, right? <laughs> so it's like they didn't see Minority Report at all. Well, yeah, they're right. trying. To, <laughs> I mean, it's not Cruz's greatest movie, but it's it's pretty good. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. The problem with that is who gets <clears throat> to judge um, who's mentally unfit in that. Regard? I think they're trying to breed a snitch culture. Like, yeah. if everybody's allowed see to something, be offended, say something. If everybody's to allowed to be degree. offended yeah. by everything. And then you're like, like, you're just allowed to call the daddy authorities to come search somebody else's house because they might have some dangerous property when there's no proof that they did anything wrong. To me, that's like, they do this in the school system too with the D.A.R.E. programs, things like this. They, well, we're becoming a nation of Karens. Right. Yeah. Karens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Kyle's. And Kyle. Yeah. Kyle's pretty cool, man. I guess so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we all want to be um, Joseph from the Paris Council, not uh, the Susans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, areas in which they don't want to address or look into, like gun-free zones don't work, but that's not something they, if they go to back against that, I guess it makes them feel like they're weak against gun control. Mm -hmm. Like um, Dirty Uncle Joe, or whatever his nickname is, is the one that like really pushed for gun-free zones. I think he was the champion of gun-free zones. <laughs> Just an anecdote. Right. And then you got, um, what, I guess a common thing, like you pointed out, I mean, you have uh, fatherlessness uh, companies, a lot of these shoot mass shooters, right? Um, yeah, there's, they'll say like, uh, like they'll ignore some uh, black crime, like in Chicago over the other weekend, there's like 73 murders, right? But it's not politicized and it's not something that happens all the time, but when something of this scale, they think like, oh man, now, now it's an emergency. It's like, dude, this has always been a problem. Yeah. Uh, let's look at it and address it. Uh, fatherless is not just a problem, I guess, in the black communities, but in here, uh, you, you put it out, I remember seeing that, that pretty much all these white shooters are fa fatherless, right? So that's something also to kind of look into. Um, I think this culture that kind of pushes, uh, I guess, belittles masculinity uh, and pushes that away instead of uh, embracing masculinity, because maybe it's a lack of that, that we have some of these problems into like these children's lives. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, I mean, yeah, there's mental institutions, right? There's, uh, there's stuff to kind of check, but I think this red flag logs is a big problem because that means anybody can kind of pinpoint and say, check on this guy over here. And they just had like a, a, a shooting in Maryland. Somebody, Open right? fire on law enforcement. Hey, as soon as he came in, <laughs> bad news. Yeah. Some, some of these guys are hell set on the idea of that. No, it means no. And right. I really can't blame him, honestly. I, you really can't. I mean, it started off as what they said a domestic argument is what they're portraying, and uh, they came up. I want to say they came real late at night. I can't remember the exact time. And honestly, for the idea of law enforcement or anybody knocking on somebody's door late at night, you're pretty much walking in a very sketchy territory. I mean, home invasions. I mean, Baltimore's not Merlin in general is not really not a great area in a lot of areas. I don't know where he was, but. It does create some conflict when you show up late and may or may not identify yourself upon approaching. So it's a lot like we go back into the lack of detail thing, but the, the red flag laws do create a huge issue, I think, on both sides. Like you were saying, uh, it falls into the, you know, you might not be stable and you might not be stable and this guy's not stable and you're not stable and we'll figure it out eventually. I and then if know. you defend yourself, guess what? You fell right into their narrative. Yeah. Right. Okay. See, you were unstable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's the dialectic, right? Because it's, yeah. it's and or, or it's one or the other, no matter what. Right. Yeah. There's no no middle position there's no yeah. like i don't think it's good to forfeit property i don't think that the government should outgun the people that they wish to rule exactly. none of these arguments come into play then when they take it from you who knows how they're going to store it and you know the chief of police's kids got a birthday coming up and you know it'd be nice to give them you know, i'm not right. gonna buy them a gun to hell give me yours <laughs> right yeah you know, it's missing the evidence locker you know it's just oh shit it's just, it's and then it's the used armory. in another crime yeah. three years down the road <laughs> yeah. right, right. Come back and get you later. All right. How did you do this? You were locked up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of these laws are kind of ridiculous, especially in the advent of 3D printing guns now. Um, yeah. So you know, there's a guy who can, like, make it in, like, get parts from uh, Home Depot 
and like uh, sell junk that technically shoots and could register as a firearm. Um, and I think that's great. I think this is even something like you find like in Hong Kong or right now are clamoring for their own Bill of Rights, for their own Second Amendment, and for like Americans to kind of come in there. They're waving the flag. It's like they want uh, the kind of freedom that we have to protect ourselves that they lack there. And then Americans are like, well, here, we'll just give them ours. We don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> We're not using it. You can right. have it. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want it no more. Here you go. You can have our Second Amendment. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's funny. They're not waving the flag of any other country out there. They're waving the American flag. They're not waving uh, you know, the Mexican flag. I mean, I think the Mexican flag does. They still have a Second Amendment, but there's only like two or three other countries in the world that has a right to arms. I was looking into. And it's heavily, heavily monitored and restricted. Right. So, yeah, there's no flag for uh, Australia. Or, well, Mozambique, they have an AK on their flag. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so, I mean, pretty sure they're pro 2A. <laughs> well, the, the government is, at least. So. I right, think yeah. there's a couple other countries that also have rifles on their flag. I'm not exactly sure, but that's one I'm, I'm familiar with. All right. Now that's beast. Now, seriously, guys, what kind of video games have you guys been playing that uh, has caused you to become a productive... Uh, you know, Second Amendment right carrying uh, product of people here. Are you guys playing a lot of Minecraft Sims? Uh, <laughs> daily chores in the house and making money. And <laughs> So, one thing that I like when I watch Lord of the Rings or anything where they're fighting with swords, I. I'm so thankful we have rifles because like, <laughs> I would not want to fight with a sword. That just seems terrible. It's Shoot hard work. Right. <laughs> Shooting a gun is just so much yeah. easier. You got to wear, I mean, the only thing heavy might be the body armor. Would rather risk a through and through than dismemberment, right? Right, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah totally. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the armor does look cool being a knight and all, but that's so heavy, though. Yeah. yeah. So heavy, though. You got to yeah. be like, Strong, salt of the earth, dedicated to carry that all day. <laughs> the well, I forget the name of the battle, but like the British archers show that that stuff can slow you down. Um, when Britain uh, defeated uh, the French, at, I'm not sure what the name of the battle, but they got bogged down in the in some heavy sodded soil, and it, the, the 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 British just outnumbered, just kept raining arrows onto them, and then they all just kind of fell apart. Generations lost. Uh, but yeah, keep your distance. It's yeah, very easy. I mean, you can, you can even teach, uh, I mean, there's children in armies in Africa. This is unfortunate, but you also have like these uh, cool videos I see on YouTube, like a little girl is coming out there doing her own shooting range, right? Three gun competitions. You see like, Leanna Mitchell, actually, there's videos of her when she's 18 years old, and I mean, she would put a mini soldiers to shame, just yeah. absolutely destroy them right. in a competition. The great equalizer, no matter how tall or small. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think that's a good thing to be on the level playing ground with, with the government. Yeah, right? definitely. Um, and I think that's kind of what uh, it was intended, of course, right? It's a natural thing, though. I mean, right. when you really think about it, any animal has some level of... of protection against something else i mean no matter where you look at on the food chain there's only one thing that didn't have a, a level of protection it was the dodo bird and it panned out really well for him i guess <laughs> for somebody but uh, not really them but everything has protection i just don't understand how people look at their local legislation and say hey the guy that has an arm detail is convincing you to walk around and be defenseless you know he's good yeah you not so much. And, and that's one of the, the points I was thinking about on my drive over here, strictly just to pick up T-shirts, by the way. Um, <laughs> people always argue pro or, or against Second Amendment or gun control based on where they are. Nobody ever really takes the time to think about the inner city single mom who's yeah. not in the greatest neighborhood because the husband was locked up for a plant and he can't come home <laughs> because he can't live in government housing with her because of laws. And what's she supposed to do? Just sit there and, you know, whatever, just take it as it comes. You know, you, you, should, you shouldn't have made that decision 20 years ago. Therefore, you must now die. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just wait for the police to come arrive. And, yeah. You know, when, when it's, seconds uh, count, the police are only yeah, minutes away. An hour late <laughs> with their chalk to, you know, right. demarcate your body around the floor. Yeah. And make sure they write good uh, reports for that. That's uh, where you can rely on them. Um, yeah, I think that's uh, a good point in that especially in some of these neighborhoods, mm -hmm. it's, it's a good form of protection. And I think it kind of, you, I don't know, not disable people in a way when you tell them that you don't need this sort of stuff. And these home invasions happen across the country, right? Um, and you don't really hear about all the, you never see the news like championing, like in, in Norfolk, for example, 
there was a shooting of a 7-Eleven. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much how they, they phrased it, the shooting of 7-Eleven. Mm-hmm. They didn't phrase it like, yeah, the shooting was a guy with a good guy with a gun that stopped uh, two burglars right. uh, <laughs> and shot them. Uh, crazy. He shot two people in the inside of 7-Eleven. It's, it's all clickbait, really. It's, right. Like, that's how the news is now. It's like, oh, God damn it. You just can't tell the truth from the beginning. No, they certainly can't. Well, I think uh, there's a story of like a 13 or 14 year old kid who stopped a home invasion by having a revolver. Right. It's like, <laughs> so this is a child that's obviously competent enough to fend off adult people who are like immoral enough to like break into somebody's house. Is he the one that Fortnite dance on top of his body? <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. The, flo- <laughs> the floss was overkill, yes. I'll, I'll give you that. Uh, yeah, in terms of video games, yeah, what's going to be next? Are we going to need background checks to get uh, Nintendo? <laughs> California is about to implement uh, background checks on ammo buying now. Yes. So if, you, if they're going to take it, you might as well learn to make it yourself. All right. You still got to do background check over there on powder and primers. Oh, so gosh. They, I mean, they, they sewed it up really, really well over there. And apparently they have, oh, God, they said that if you make a mistake, then you have to wait 10 days. And uh, if you get it right, apparently they have a, um, a registry list in California. So if you're already on a registry list, then you go in and it's a dollar for the background check and... Uh, if you make a mistake, then you got to redo the background check, and it's twenty bucks and takes ten day waiting period. Oh That's on ammunition, so you already got you know the long list of things that you are no no there. You know as far as you can't own anything cool, and then you know to feed anything. Let's just say you go to the range and you say, "Damn, I shot more than I should have." Let me go down to the gun store. It's like a twenty minute wait, and just say if you didn't initial where you were supposed to. Now you got to wait ten days. And pay more. And pay more. Because government loves you that much. I do like how in the beginning with the first shooter in Texas, El Paso, it's like, oh no, look at this. Trump's responsible for that. Right? <laughs> yeah. uh, Republicans are responsible for everything. They never did that when Obama was in charge with, uh, uh, Our, uh, with the shooting at the New Pulse San, nightclub. Oh, yeah. Orlando. Orlando. Orlando, yeah. yeah. Uh, or the other school shootings during the, Obama's presidency. Yeah. Sandy Hook was during Las President Vegas. Obama. The, the country music concert right yeah well that one just kind of disappeared from the narrative yeah because it was a bunch of pro 2a people getting shot <laughs> <All right. laughs> uh it's, so it's funny how they'll go and just like throw everyone under the bus all right anyone's to the right side but then you have uh this dayton shooter uh praises aoc uh praises and tiff of hardcore leftists and then the media is very quiet about that the media's like, oh, the, I guess there was some leftist leaning in him. It's like, oh, sometimes it's one or the other, right? Uh, but you don't see like... Uh, but he played video games, so there oh, you go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, supersedes, yeah. Right. Uh, but there's no focus on the tension, just blaming these shooters themselves uh, or maybe underlooking uh, some of this like uh, mental issue causes that lead, led them to have these kind of problems. Um, but yeah, it's very kind of hypocritical in that sense, in like the spotlight, the limelight, where some of this attention is at. Uh, so what do we do now? Do we blame all the left people out there for this, right? Um, I mean, there are some areas where the media sometimes like dog whistles for them to attack people. It's like, look, there's, those are concentration camps. Uh, and like, you know, the, the ICE facilities, for example. And there was a guy who, who took out a, a gun to try to take it down and blow up a gas uh, explosion. There. He had an improvised explosive as well. Right, yeah. right. Um, and of course, you know... The, but I'm, I think those are banned. So yeah, how, right. how did he get that? How did he get that? <laughs> right, what games were he playing? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think uh, the media has kind of lost touch of trying to be impartial a long time ago and being objective and is very clearly biased um, and pushing their own agenda instead of like examining this, instead of trying to create this uh, animosity between groups. They're just trying to like throw more coal into that and light it up for more. Uh, I guess it makes sense for them. CNN ratings are kind of going down, yeah. right? And they need more uh, grab uh, attention headlines to kind of trick people. The attention and the people to watch, make them watch. All right. News ain't about news. It's about ratings now. So yeah, and they're hurting in ratings. Yeah. So I think that well to put a positive light on this, there's an independent media out there that's kind of like drawing a lot of the people that are interested in being informed. And they are doing a better job of actually being impartial, I, for the most part. There are people that don't do such a good job, but... Talking about uh, Babylon B? 
Of course. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> They're great. Yeah. And the onion, too. And the onion. Two really good ones. So, what group is this? There's well, all sorts. There's, oh, yeah. there's choice out there more He's than ever before. He's fishing for a compliment, man. Give him his compliment. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, I think that this is hastening the downfall of the, the dinosaur media, right? They can't, they can't change in this, uh, this you know, uh, creative destructive market that the internet has brought us or helped facilitate. So there are people that can fill these gaps and people are leaving. I heard that uh, Comcast and the other cable providers are hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging users like crazy also. So this feeds into the mainstream media companies losing eyeballs and everything like that. So they get stuck with... They can't compete, so they try to discredit. Exactly. And then they're funded by pharmaceutical companies and these certain companies and the people that are speaking out against that are exposing them. So it's this whole cycle that's feeding into itself. And it's just this building falling in on itself. It's great to watch and it's all sorts of laughs. I like it. Yeah. Uh I think that's a great point. I think there's a lot of attention going to, I think, um, towards podcasts like ours, but not as big as a lot of the other ones, like uh, like Joe Rogan, he got uh, Bernie Sanders on there. Uh, and I think his base is mostly conservative people. I haven't watched it, so I don't know if you actually asked him any of the hard questions or anything like that. I scrolled by it and I saw the timestamp. That's just how I judge my Joe Rogan podcast. If it's three hours, it's in my, I'll look into it further, like who the person is. If it's less than two hours, I don't even think about it. And I think Bernie was an hour and a half. I'm like, sorry, Bern. <laughs> but I watched the initial Killer Mike interview with Bernie Sanders before Bern the whole Bernie movement. So I was already kind of hip to the Bernie game. And uh, Killer Mike, I don't agree with him economically on a lot of things, but he's a super huge 2A advocate. So I have a lot of respect for that. What do you guys think about what happened to uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson? So he posted this uh, the stats. This says in the past 48 hours, we lost 34 people. But then he says, uh, but on average, also in those same 48 hours, he lost 500 to medical errors, 300 to the flu, 250 to suicide, 200 car accidents, 40 to homicide via handgun. Often our emotions respond more to spectacle than to data. Uh, I think it's great, but I think uh, he was wrong in uh, having to apologize for that. Well, if you apologize, you put a target on yourself. That's what he did. You're willing to, <laughs> you're willing to back down. Yeah. Yeah. Because he didn't say anything that was factually inaccurate. Right. Um, but it didn't fit the popular narrative either. So. All right. Sorry, Hopefully. guys. I don't know what I was thinking. All right. It basically, shows that you'll fold under pressure. You can stand behind your word. I mean, he, you he's got it. some corporate sponsorship too. He's got to take care of. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, people are killed more by. A lot of car accidents uh, than they are by homicides, and especially like people look at uh, uh, AR rifles. Like it's uh, handguns are higher than that in terms of homicides. Um, I don't know what the ratio is for swimming pool accidents, but they're pretty high too. You have some stats here from the CDC. So there's 32,000 deaths a year, and overall, gun-related crimes have been dropping. Gun violent deaths, right? I think that's great over the past decade or two. Um, 60% of that is suicide. Well, it's weird because yeah. a lot of people like to conflate the two. Yeah. Yep. yeah. They like to conflate. It's like, yeah, that's also homicide. Well, they're trying to pump the numbers up. Right. right. They'll say, well, if they didn't have a gun, they would have committed suicide. Because <laughs> yeah. that's the only right. way you can kill yeah, yourself. Yeah. You know, you got just hung yourself in a jail cell. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> somebody <laughs> was hung <laughs> in a jail cell. Something happened to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> right. The only way I wanted to die today was to shoot myself. <laughs> right. <laughs> so they'll find means, and generally men are more efficient at committing and having those suicides, uh, are male privilege. 3% are accidents, so minus another 960. 4% uh, are justified, so minus another 1,280. Uh, so, so that's actually like probably saving some lives at the same time, potentially. Right. Yeah. Right. So, nope. yeah. Well, there's also a suppressed CDC study on the defensive use of firearms. It's like... And the, the, the lowest number, it's over a million times a year a firearm is used to defend a person in the, you know, defending themselves from a crime. So, and this study was actively <clears throat> suppressed. It would be, yeah. yeah. Against the narrative. I'm, I'm totally pulling these numbers out. But there was an, also a study where, probably the same study, just in some different parts, where 
uh, when, when the shooter was subdued by the police, it was something like 14 people were shot, but when the shooter was subdued by a citizen, it was like four. Right, so you, you find <laughs> yeah. when there's an active shooter in the scene, uh, when you wait for the police, it goes in the double digits. When it comes to uh, an armed civilian, an armed patriot, uh, who is on the scene during an active shooter scene, it is in the single digits, uh, the death count. I mean, you had that uh, that guy that chased down that shooter at uh, in Texas, right? Uh, the church the, shooter, the church one of the church shooters. Right. He got in his truck and just went after him, hunted him down, took him out. <laughs> but you don't hear much attention for that. You have that incident that just happened recently. I'm pretty sure the guy maybe might have been doing maybe a Second Amendment walk or something like that at the Walmart. You hear yeah, about this? Yeah, the Walmart and the firefighters. The guy had like a hundred rounds or something like that on on his body. Kind right. Of, yeah. Um, but and, and a, yeah, but a firefighter, and say in the event that he was going to cause trouble, a firefighter held him and uh, detained him at gunpoint. Right? It wasn't a cops. Yeah. It was right. <laughs> if it wasn't Walmart security. That's somebody they should arm. Well, the that was reader. obviously a citizen who happened to be a firefighter because generally firefighters aren't carrying weapons anyway. Right. That's true. Yeah. You yeah. know. This is true. Some people like to say like they're all government agents, but they're not. Seventy about seventy percent of them are volunteer firefighters. So that's not like a case where like government was there though technically no no. Hey, yes. he, he, right. he pays to save you instead of the other way around. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but the one person I think uh, should be armed at Walmart should be the greeter. Absolutely. With the shotgun, maybe on his back, kind of like, a, or maybe like do it kind of double bandolero thing. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the rest of this, uh, the gun stats would be so when you have eighty percent of the homicides are gang related, right? So that's another minus eight thousand front of forty. So you're left with two thousand one hundred and twelve that are homicides, if, you know, when you remove gang-related violence and all that stuff. Uh, so out of a society of 312 million, that's 0.00001% that you're likely to be involved in a gun-related homicide shooting. Uh, lower than that if you're not involved with gangs, right? So how about that? It's not a big uh, problem as the media would like to paint it to be and uh, trying to scare everybody. You know, imagine like what it would be like if you didn't really have much media or it wasn't 24 seven and watching all the time and trying to get scared and with the next uh, epidemic, mad cow disease, remember that? Y2K mm -hmm. bug, is just, they just need something to rile people up. Yep. Yeah, scapegoat or, you know. Something to draw man. viewers to the screen is yeah. all, really all it is. Right. Uh, so I guess we're gonna wrap up around here um could actually guys then name one reason so, 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 name one reason why you need guns pissing off lefties is the right answer is there you go <laughs> <laughs> that counts okay, okay. <laughs> what's one reason you need a gun because i can make one <laughs> <laughs> that's a good answer that's a good answer <laughs> and you reggie I want to say, you know, when you really look at it, every great nation or society has disarmed their people. We've seen how they got treated in the process. So if you want to follow their trend, turn them in. And if you don't, keep them. Yeah. Uh, for me, it'd be, it's, it's, it is the greatest equalizer. Any kid, woman uh, can, can also learn how to be on the same playing field and have their bodily uh, rights respected as well, right? Uh, civilized society is a well-armed society. And we wouldn't have much of a revolution, American Revolution, if it wasn't for guns. Yeah. Science <laughs> started. Right. Uh, otherwise, you'd be speaking British or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> so with that, uh, thanks for watching and listening. This is your Libertarian Crusader. Stay liberated. See you. Peace out. <laughs>